Captain's log date, July 4th, 1943. In the early hours of July 4th, under a moonless night, the USS Trout slipped away from her tender in Fremantle, Australia. This will be our second 4th of July at sea. Several crew members were transferred off the boat during our R&R, so we have quite a few new faces aboard. Another thing that is fairly new about the boat is the Mark 18 torpedoes that are aboard. We were given six of these new fish to test out. Hopefully, it will be better than our janky Mark 14s that we've grown accustomed to. Our first objective of our 8th patrol is to proceed to the South China Sea to conduct anti-shipping operations. Our patrol zone is 175 nautical miles east-southeast of the Mekong Delta. Japanese traffic in this area should be very heavy. I suppose time will tell. Hello everybody, Wolfpack here and welcome back to more Silent Hunter 4 as we proceed on our 8th patrol. We are currently sailing, or we're going at standard speed on the, across the coast of Australia here. We're going to head up to Darwin to refuel, that's the current plan, but before I really get into that, there's some things I'd like to go over. We have some new improvements to the boat, and one of those <laughs> is the SJ Improved Radar. Now this radar has a maximum range of 30,000, or 3,000... No, 30,000 yards. Yeah, I was right the first time. Uh, so 30,000 yards, so that's roughly 15 nautical miles. So that's a pretty good range. I think the SJ radar we were equipped with before only had a range of 20,000 yards. So we have another 10,000 yards added onto there, and that will definitely help uh, us detect enemy vessels. Another thing we do have, and I'll go ahead and where do we go yeah I always click on the wrong buttons here we go here I have the JP listening gear so a, a sonic pass this is uh, our new passive sonar a sonic passive sonar that was installed in the forward torpedo room and used in tandem with WCA listening gear WCA indicators were modified so they could display JP sonar information as well as they own their own so it works well in tandem with our WCA listening or sonar gear and I'm going to try to use sonar more often. It's a helpful tool that I have not been utilizing very much. And I think uh, that has been a mistake. So I'm going to fix that this patrol. For sure. One other thing we have is the, what, the Mark 18 torpedo. Which were used well after the end of World War II. Which is pretty cool. So we're going to be using some of these. They are a British version of a German captured G7E torpedo. It became one of the most successful, or a Westinghouse version of the British capture G70. It became one of the most successful torpedoes of the war. Okay, so the the benefit of this torpedo is its electric propulsion, so it does not leave a wake. There is no wakes like our Mark 14s that we've been forced pretty much to use the entire uh, since the beginning of the war. Uh, the one downside is it, its speed is not that great. And its maximum range is not that great either. It only has a maximum range of 4,000 yards, which honestly isn't that much, uh, considering the Mark 14s can go pretty much double that at the slow setting. But again, the benefit is the lack of a wake. So that'll definitely help. Um, I'll definitely be using these in convoys and against any uh, warships we might, en might encounter. I've only loaded two in the forward tubes, and I have four more in reserves that we will load up if the if we need more so there is that uh, the radar has a maximum range of 15 nautical miles and I kind of drew it out and that's a very long distance um, so this is definitely going to come in very helpful our SJ or our SD radar our air search radar slightly outranges this it has like 5,000 yards um, more range but I also believe that partially might be because uh, we raised that pretty high up Anyway, uh, that's enough rambling about the new equipment aboard the USS Trout. Um, t actually, that's that's not it. Two other things. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll I'll talk about that later. The two other things. So we're going to go ahead and sail along the coast of Australia and refuel here at Darwin and proceed through the Java Sea to the South China Sea, and that's the current plan. Um, now, sailing through the Java Sea might be a, a little dicey. Uh, mostly due to the uh, shallow waters over there. Yeah, I'll show y'all in a minute. So we're just going to dip down and uh, get out of Darwin pretty quick. 
That's why we're heading at 15 knots right now. I'm not really concerned about how much fuel we're burning. Hell, I can even go full if I want to, but that's a little excessive. So we look in the Java Sea here, like there is not that much deep water. It is m mostly shallow water. So I'll be trying to uh, plot our course through these little deep pockets. I at least stay close to them just in case, you know, shit hits the fan and I need to try to run away. But I feel like if we get caught in here by a hunter killer group or something, uh, it's going to be pretty hard to get away. My saving grace has been the deep water, but as our, our marines and the army push the Japanese back, we're, move, we're going to move into shallower waters, especially when we get around the coast of Japan. Uh, sailing over here in Tokyo and Tokyo Bay and such even though Tokyo Bay has some deep pockets too it's just going to get a little harder uh, once we move into the South China Sea and such and along the coast because that's where we will be operating a little bit more I think that's all for now um, I guess the last thing is someone asked about the conning tower so we still have the old style the pre-war conning towers. Uh, later in the war, the Americans outfitted their subs to have more anti-aircraft guns and uh, cannons on their on their sails. The USS Trout actually got this in October of 43. Well, it went to Mare Island for refit in October 43 and didn't get out of refit till I want to say either January or February of 44. It was a really long refit. I'm not sure why it has such a long refit. I couldn't really find that information but so that's probably I don't know what the game will do when it comes to that time uh, but I'm sure we'll get a new conning tower fairly soon and as for the new paint scheme the USS Trout actually never got the measure 32 paint scheme I'm it was it was sunk in 44 so I believe that might be part of the reason it never got the Measure 32 paint scheme, but it ended up keeping the, I think, Measure 9 is what this one is called. Mark 9 or Measure 9, something like that. So we will keep this until either we get a new boat, which I'm sure will happen uh, in the meantime. We'll probably get a Baleo, I have a feeling, so I'm not sure though. That is if, of course, assuming we survive, there is a high chance of us getting bombed. Just one destroyer dropping a depth charge right down our periscope. And that'll be it. That'll be the end of the USS Trout. And, but I don't expect that to happen. I have high hopes of making it to the end of the war. If anything, who is messaging me? Those people, no common courtesy. No common courtesy at all. Don't, can't you tell I'm recording a video? Anyway, I'm, I'm going to have to turn that crap off. I'm just going to plot my course here. Our objective is in the South China Sea. Uh, right off the Mekong Delta here. So I'll patrol around here, see what happens, but I am going to move further northeast towards the home islands. I want to pay a visit to the home islands. We haven't been up here yet, and with this boat, we have the fuel to do it, so I'm thinking of going into a port, and I, I kind of have my mindset on Hiroshima. I think that would be very interesting. Um, I don't want to go to Tokyo that I mean that's a long distance I know Japan's a small island but that's still an extra I guess that's not too bad it's only about 500 nautical miles but uh, we'll see also no American submarine actually went into Tokyo Bay proper I mean you just look at this <laughs> that, that would be very difficult for a submarine to navigate especially when you're being hunted uh, this was kinda dubbed Tokyo Bay and that's where American subs operated. So they never went into here. So that would be a good challenge, I suppose. I, I'm sure this is mined to hell and such, so I don't know how uh, viable it would be. We could go to Yokohama. That might be cool. Anyway, that's all in the future. I might transfer the sub pack later, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. That is my mandatory pre-patrol ramble out of the way so I'll go ahead and get down to business I'll head to Darwin and I'll probably get back to you guys when we're somewhere in the Java Sea uh, most likely when we are being attacked I do expect somewhat heavy air cover over in this area so we'll see how that goes anyway I will cut here and I'll get back to you guys momentarily well it looks like our new SJ radar is already proving itself we got we picked up a contact here of course is 
heading east and its speed apparently is medium according to my radar operator let's go ahead and uh we don't need that long of a track I Single doubt contact. we can see him three four Bearing. zero yeah three, we're picking him up on radar four, anyway I need zero. to exit out of this long range three four zero long range okay so let's just go ahead and turn due south and all ahead standard right now uh, man your battle stations this could be a friendly I highly doubt it though and I want a flat gunner on on deck right now I don't want my actual deck gun crew out there just in case anything happens but we are cruising on the surface tracking a contact so I think it would be a good idea to have our <laughs> our flat gunner at the ready all right and we're going to go ahead and turn about here and track this son of a bitch it looks like so speed medium I'm guessing probably around 10 knots that would be a pretty fair guess let's go ahead and let's check on our radar here whoa this boat's a rockin this boat is a rockin oh what happened here what's this bearing the target oh sweet this is pretty sweet I think this is all new <laughs> never never anyway let me let me on your position this view is always just so confusing sometimes all right so we have yeah just bearing the target it seems oh this is for this one this one changes the bearing okay I thought this kinda of followed the track of our PPI scope over there here let's see I thought that's what it did so well let's, let's check let's experiment real quick so it was at 340 so we're coming up on 340 and we should see a spike here yep yeah I saw it I saw it so it does work in tandem with that it's just uh, I guess we can change it three four zero where where is he what's his exact hmm Okay, this is interesting. I'm having issues. <laughs> I obviously am not too sure how this works right now. I'm having... Okay, wait a minute. Switch range and sweep. So I think this is what bearing we're at. So we're currently going 200. We're closing in at when we get the 340. So this shows what bearing our actual radar is on. And I guess there would have been... Okay, so that's what that is. I'm not sure bearing to target so I'm guessing one is range and I'm not sure what this other one so this is range obviously and I don't know what the second number is anyway I'm gonna stop fucking with this the other radar is way easier to understand <laughs> sweep uh, I never that was never there before I don't think I think that's new I'm not a hundred percent sure Wait, our contact's at 6-0. That might have explained it. That might have explained our issues. Alright, so... So let's go ahead and sweep. Okay, we're closing in on our bearing. Yep, see, there was a spike. Okay, got it. And I'm just, I'm not too sure how this bearing the target wheel works. Anyway, I'll stop. No one cares. I'll look it up in my spare time. The radar, I obviously screwed it up. I'm guessing somehow there's a way to get the range from how high that spikes and such. Um, I guess there, there's a way to get range off this. This one has range lines, but I'm sure this one, this scope is more precise. So our a, our a scope radar is the one that is uh, idiot proof, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Anyway, so we'll keep track on them. Right, sorry about that little distraction. Let's go ahead and 
move towards him. Looks like he's not moving very fast. I'll wait till... Okay, we're picking him up on hydrophones now. I could probably submerge at this point. Let's see. Where are you? Single contact. Bearing. Six. Two. Long range. Um, no, I don't see any smoke on the horizon just yet. So, now is probably the perfect yes. time to dive to periscope, periscope depth. depth. Let's watch our boat dive. I am very curious about the radar, though. It's actually... Radar. Uh... I'm not sure. That's not much help. Anyway, I'll pr I'll look it up. I'll figure it out and get back to you guys on that one. Uh, for some, I never really used the A scope or the PPI. Sorry, I mostly use the A scope radar. Uh, I just never really used. I know this is the uh, kind of radar system, this PPI that the German U-boats have. And I never really used it much in Silent Hunter 3 either. So, anyway. We'll go ahead and submerge. One thing I do want to start making more use of is radar depth. I have been using it a little bit more, mostly off screen. I haven't been using it much uh, on camera, but uh, I will showcase that a little bit more because as our radar gets better and better, it's uh, a more valuable sensor. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, completely Bird submerge. Four, One reason for not in liking radar depth as much, especially with the Tambor class submarine, is we have this giant hunky sail that just sticks out of the water and that does not uh that's pretty easy to spot compared to just the little mast so that's that's one reason i'm not a fan of radar depth especially in the tambor the later conning towers do fix that issue the sensors are higher up to uh accommodate that so we'll keep moving at well seven knots underwater here which is actually pretty good we're making pretty good speed and we'll come nice and close to his track and just lay in wait. This guy is going to come right to us. I, depending on what he is, I might use our new torpedoes, but we might end up just sticking with the Mark 14s. I'd rather uh, use our classy torpedoes on convoys and such and targets where them seeing the wake is not acceptable. It's more of a risk. Let's see here. Well, let's get our all ahead of one third, please. And let's get our yes, follow him, please. Where is he? Merchant, closing, bearing, eight, one. Wow, uh, he's still over the horizon. He must be pretty a lot farther off than I expected. Well, we keep our scope on that bearing. Let's see. Let's get a rough range here. Oh yeah, he's like seven nautical miles away. I guess he still has a while. All right, I'll, let's just go to like 500 RPM right now. We need to just crawl. He should be in visual range now. I'll stop. Well, not all stop, but. <clears throat> Merchant, bearing, eight, two, closing. Merchant, bearing, okay, eight, there he is. Four, closing. And what I could do is rocket past this line and use a stern tube. That's what I'm gonna do, all ahead flank. <laughs> uh, this is a good opportunity to use a stern torpedo. And I'd rather, I'd rather just use that now, while we have the opportunity to set it up. Okay, I'll stop. Because our the stern torpedo tubes are kind of a pain to set up, and it's going to be very difficult to identify this fellow uh, at this angle. Golly. Can lower our scope a bit too. Don't need it sticking out of the water that much. Okay, well we will do what we do best and lay in wait for him. As long as we're still barely moving, just crawling here. Let's go like 50 RPM. Yes, sir. Speed, one. There we go. Yeah, even a little under it. That works for me. I am A-OK -okay with that.
I'm curious if this is how much range we have left or how many nautical miles we've traveled. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not too sure. I don't think that number's big enough to include all the miles we've traveled aboard the USS Trout, but... Who knows? Uh, yeah, I don't think- I definitely don't think it's... There was a way- I mean, they did record how many miles they went and such, so... It w I should have kept track of that. That would have been cool to know how many nautical miles we sailed each patrol. That's something I kind of want to do now. I might do that next patrol. It's a little too late now, but... Alright, let's- anyway, the task at hand is to sink this Maru. Where is he? 099. My scope is totally... Okay, I kind of think I know what he is, just from his low profile. He's pretty low in the water, and it, he's pretty fat, which kind of gives it away. Um, I think he's one of these coastal freighters here. I think, he, I think he's actually a coastal freighter. I'm not sure. We'll let him approach, though, and see if I'm right. 1,850 tons. If he doesn't have any guns, I might just surface and dead gun him, because this little peep squeak isn't really worth one of my torpedoes that's worth, what, $10,000? <laughs> I'd rather waste some ordnance on him, like uh, dead gun shells. That's all he's worth. Okay, but he does have a gun in the aft section here. That's definitely him, though. Yeah. It sure is. Is he turning? Oh, I think he is turning. Is he just zigzagging? Has he spotted us? Oh, he has. Oh, God. My periscope was way too high up. Well, that settles that. Surface the boat. Let's get them. Get on there, boys. Get ready for a gunfight. Uh, all ahead flank. Let's just preemptively uh, use our speed advantage we have over him. We need to get some distance, too, because that gun might rip into us. But this is the benefit of having a stern-mounted deck gun, is you can run away from your target and shoot. All right. Get ready to open fire on him. Yeah, he's already shooting at us. Oh Fortune. no. One, three, okay. Zero. Closing. Yes, well, sir. Man the well, I think you missed. Where's the? <laughs> bearing. One, three, you overshot three, a little bit. Closing. Good luck, merchant man. All right, let's turn a little bit just to uh, give him a smaller profile to hit. There we go. There we go. Already a good hit. Good job, boys. Let's give him a smaller profile to hit. Rudder and midships. There we go. God, that gun. All right, we got a pretty good hit. Uh, aim for the water line, poor for Four. Oh, our machine gun. I don't like... This conning tower is pretty high up. I'm probably to protect the crew, which is a good thing, but it makes it so I can't shoot merchant ships with my AA gun. Anyway, something we'll have to live with. Okay, I don't... Uh, sweep, please. Oh, that's the radar. Just continuous sweep. I don't need constant updates on the ship I'm shelling. Hey, my gun crew is actually doing one hell of a job right now. I'm pretty proud of them. They're going to get some medals. This is very unusual. Oh, this... This merchant crew really does not know how to work that gun. That's a-okay -okay with me. I'm going to say that, and then I'm just going to get a giant hole on the side of my boat. Oh, wow, there's an island. <laughs> I didn't notice that. What, what island is that? I'm guessing it's this little guy here. 
Kind of looks like a looks like a bear popping a squat or something. <laughs> Honestly, I don't I don't know. Am I crazy? That's weird. That's okay. Well, that's the first thing I saw. Um, I'm sure this island has a real name, and I'm sorry if I offended anyone who is watching my Silent Hunter 4 Let's Plays and lives on this island. My apologies. Anyway, we are going to... Ooh, that sounded pretty close. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. I didn't like that one bit. Y'all returning fire? Been up here for three seconds. There we go. If that misses, I'm going to come down there. Oof. You waste one more shot and I'm court-martialing all of you. I'm just kidding. There we go. That looks like a good one. Oh, that scared him. Oh, yeah. That was a juicy hit. Okay, we can probably we can probably slow down. You know, this is probably a classic uh, example of underestimating your enemy. Because I'm going to slow down and he's just going to peg me and kill all my crew. But... That's the risk we take. Oh, that, that looks like it might be kind of close. Oh, that was a pretty brutal explosion. That didn't look too good. That did not look too good. Uh, that was terrible, my friends. Alright. Well, he is listing pretty heavily. I'm going to keep firing at him, mostly because he does have that gun. If he didn't have that gun, I'd probably hold fire and wait a little bit. Just to see how uh, the handle was flooding. So I think he w she would go down on her own if it weren't for... Uh, well, she would go down on her own eventually, but I'm not going to keep taking fire. And my crew is missing all of a sudden. They were doing so well. They were doing so well. <clears throat> anyway... How's, how's that local sports team doing, huh? Oh boy, here we go. Ooh. Okay, I think that's gonna fly right over me. Yep, sure is. Ooh, that was a menacing sound. Okay, if you boys don't start hitting, I'm gonna come down there. It's my belt. Oh my god. Give me a range, please. 14,000 feet. Aye, aye, sir. Let's see how that does. It's closer. Yeah, that was definitely wrong. We're already down to 78 shells. I believe we only start with uh, 100 dead gun shells. I think that's... Okay, got him right in the butt there. That wasn't too bad. Disabling his engines, yes. Might have taken out the gun crew there. That's probably just wishful thinking. Let's all stop. He's not shooting anymore. Maybe I did take out the gun crew. Or we're just out of range. I don't think he has a very large gun on him. Not too sure I didn't get close enough to look, honestly. I don't really care to. Actually a pretty stable gun platform. Okay, he is increasing range pretty rapidly. Looks like we're mostly going to be hitting him with like plunging fire at this kind of range. There we go. Like that. Which is fine by me. I don't expect to use the deck gun too much this uh, patrol. But I'd rather not waste torpedoes on smaller ships like this. I think the deck gun... This is what the deck gun's for. Oh, he's done. That's it. I'm holding my fire. And we will we will wait outside of range and see if he sinks. I'm not going to waste my ammo. I told... I, literally, I told you... They said holding fire, and then what? You accidentally step on the pedal down there or something, you genius? 
Alright, let's go take a look at this Maru. See how he's holding up. Hopefully my trigger happy sailors don't keep <laughs> sending rounds down range here. Oh, he might be alright. It just looked like he had a pretty bad explosion. I don't think he's doing too well. Yeah, he's, he's definitely slowing down. Well, let's, uh, let's stalk him a little bit. Let's turn around. Let's head north. I'll head two-thirds. Uh, I might have to throw a few more at him. Maybe. I'm just worried about that gun. I'm getting too close. Oh, he is. He... Alright, let's align ourselves here. Ooh, that is very pretty. Alright, let's finish him. Oh, that is awesome looking. Wow. Anyway, let's focus on the job at hand. All yes, stop. All stop. Hopefully they start hitting him now. Oh, he's retaliating. And we are a very nice profile for him here. Oh, let's keep shooting him. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that that was a little too close for comfort. Oh, boy. One more. God. I do not like standing up here where there's a high possibility of my head being taken off by what? I don't know what kind of gun that is necessarily, but a very large round. Just seem to be getting a fix on them though. We already got one hit. Two hits? There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm coming down range. He's still putting out smoke, surprisingly. Would have thought he'd be pretty much dead in the water at this point. I gotta say, Silent Hunter 4 is one amazing looking game, though. This game is fairly old, and, like, it, it still holds up. Like, if this was released today, I wouldn't really... I would think it still, like, looks very good. It's a it's a pretty big jump from Silent Hunter 3. Oh my, oh my god. You guys. This gun crew. Like, they're so great. And then... They just decide, you know, screw it, let's waste ammunition. That's the taxpayer's money, son. Or taxpayer's round, son. Alright. There we go. Waterline hit. This is why... I generally don't like to use the deck gun. I like to let my crew do it, but sometimes they're just so abysmal. It, it really hurts. And especially when I'm getting shot at. Like, there's no... <laughs> under. I understand, though. It is probably harder to uh, aim a, deck, a, a gun and, you know, fire it downrange with accuracy while being shot at, but still. That gun is... I'm surprised he hasn't hit us yet, honestly. <laughs> Knowing my luck. Uh, or a plane hasn't come out of the sky. Honestly, I have been... I've been let off pretty easy. Okay, now she's done. Adios. Good riddance. Yes, Follow sir. plotted course. Returning to course, sir. That dead gun crew isn't getting their medals anymore. <laughs> that was pretty... Wait, how much ammo have we expended? Almost half of our ammunition. Well, I mean, it's alright. I don't plan to use the deck gun too much. Oh, wow. She really just lit up like a firecracker. And there's a lifeboat getting out. Looks like they got off just in time. That thing's just one big burning mess. And that gun crew is... That's a, that's a fairly stubby gun. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I did do think I identified it correctly. I do like this. This yellow stripe is kind of cool looking. It's very... I like that scheme. That's pretty nice. Anyway, there goes our first ship of the patrol. What was it? Let's make sure we got a Tashan Maru. That is what I... Oh, I put Coastal Freighter. Uh, it's about the same amount of tons. I'm 90% sure they're the same thing. Uh, the only difference is the Coastal Freighter is the what the Allies use. <laughs> and the uh, Tashan Maru is what uh, the Japanese Coastal Freighter is called. Anyway, no, who cares? We sunk a ship. Bye-bye. Well, there goes ship number one. I'm going to continue on our course. We're already on a good streak, and we haven't even gotten into the Flora Sea. We're still way out here. Let's secure from battle stations and proceed onward. I will get back to you guys whenever something adventurous develops. Okay, just a quick update on the radar situation. I was doing some research, and I think my my this scope here is a little glitched out. I'm supposed to have a range scale here. And I don't have it, so this isn't very helpful for me, so I'll just leave it to the AI at the moment. But this other scope, the A scope here, uh, should is still sufficient. Um, I was looking with the OCC mod, and honestly, I think I might have been, I might have messed this up. Oh, uh, with something I did, I had a glitch with the Tambor submarine uh, at first, whenever I initially got it, and I, I fixed it by deleting some things. <laughs> Uh, but I think that it might have affected the radar. I, that's the only thing I can think of. But anyway, I'm not too worried about it. It works fine. It's just I can't really read the uh, the PPI scope, which is kind of an irritating. But I will be able to live with it. I'm not the radar operator anyway. Uh, at least the A scope still works, and it has the range reads and it rings and everything. It's just. It, this all this other scope is is just another way of confirming range and uh, the target uh, this one should be sufficient for now so just wanted to update update you guys on the sitch and that'll be all for the time being I am currently transiting the Flora Sea it hasn't been long since our last uh, little talk so I will keep transiting this way and I'll get back to you folks when uh, something happens so we're getting another radar contact over here at bearing 055 and I believe it is a lone merchant ship due to its speed and course it's heading east southeast let's go ahead and mark that in I probably will end up using a torpedo this time let's turn towards him just to uh, space out my deck gun attacks all ahead full and we will approach the target here looks like his course let's go ahead and get a better plot going on here mark him occasionally so we can get a good track that morse code does not want to stop in the background all right now hopefully I don't mess this up and get spotted like with our last little friend and that would be slightly irritating so let's go ahead and run kind of in front of him okay let's mark him here oh man I'm getting tired this is probably going to be the last attack of the episode I don't know what length we're getting at now. I don't really care. I'm not too concerned about the length of the episode. If it's long, it's long. If it's short, it's short. Ugh, that's how I feel about it. You got a problem with it. You can take it up with the comments, I suppose. <laughs> uh, that's a good way of settling it. Let's adjust this a little bit. This does not look very good. Going right through that bad boy. Gosh. Okay, that looks good, right? Yeah, that's a pretty good track. More or less, more or less. That's good enough for me. I am not the most precise captain. No, I'm not. I've kind of thought, I'm thinking, the next Let's Play I do of a Silent Hunter game, and I'm not going to do it for this one at the moment because I want to keep it consistent, but my next playthrough, I'm going to disable the map icons. Uh, I do think. I used to play like that a lot more. And I kind of stopped when I started doing playthroughs, mostly due to the fact uh, I want the audience to kind of know what the hell is going on. But I think if I got rid of them, I'd be okay at this point. I think y'all would be able to keep up, for the most part. Alright. So we are approaching. Let's see, what, what distance are we at, approximately, from his track? 
9,000 yards. Okay, yep, yeah, that's good enough for me. Periscope depth, please. I don't know if we can spot them out here. See if we can see anything out there. I don't think, no. I don't think we'll have visual contact just yet. Which is pretty good. We are well ahead of him. We'll keep heading full. Probably, yep, eight knots. And we'll keep approaching the target here. Now let's get on a intercept course. Um, my hydrophone operator. Okay, we were just tracking this guy on radar. I wonder what he is. Contact. Merchant. Closing. God, my crew today. They are not on their A game. I don't know what, how much they've been drinking. Or smoking. I mean, they can be doing anything, I guess. Um, there actually was smoking lamps and such aboard these subs. So the captain, like, airplanes? <laughs> I guess they don't really have that anymore. Okay, it's a merchant ship, my man. Who Who is on the hydrophones right now? Who are you? Okay, so this is the current crew. Sean Smith, you bastard. I I had you in one of my captain's logs. I talked about you because your name is kind of funny to me. It's literally two <laughs> two uh, first names. Sean. Oh my God, two Shans. These troublemakers. Sam F. Becker. Paul. Lee. Oh no, these are my. This isn't the hydrophone. They're in the. Sean Smith. Delbert R. Delbert Barton R. Sieglaf? Okay, that's interesting. Everett N. Bailey? Bob C. Robinson. Alright, well, I'm not sure which one of you is on the hydrophones. I wish there was a way for me to find out exactly what station these guys were operating. Oof, I would... Hmm. Look around here, let's examine. I think this is probably... Uh, what was it? What was his rank? This is this guy. Master Chief. It's probably one of these seamen. I don't know. They aren't doing a good job. I'm not very happy with them at the moment. And if he loses them now, I'm gonna... Ooh. Don't make me come up there. <laughs> Alright, we can go ahead and slow down now. Alright, we should be hunky-dory for this attack. Uh, so he's at bearing 260. Go ahead and follow him, my friend. Two five nine. All right, up scope. Let's keep our scope nice and low in the water this time. Try to avoid uh, it being spotted. Nothing. Guess I'm actually kind of surprised he's not in visual range just yet. I thought he was closer than. Oh, he's still pretty far out there. We still have a while. We are just okay. Literally, just crawl, please. That's not that's not crawling enough. Okay, he should be in visual now. Medium speed. There he is. Hello. Okay, I think I know what that is. Uh, mostly because of those masks. But I'm not going to uh, confirm it just yet. Actually, let's keep let's keep closing. I need to be ready to. Uh, 315 him so lock on we have visual problem is the visual contact is not going to update my crew's kind of all right lock and mark oh no it went away uh, i can't i need to wait I need this to be accurate. Okay, there we go. Click on our marker. Alright, mark. And the way I'm going to get... Bearing. Two. Two. Six. Seven. Closing. The way I'm going to get his range is by using our sonar this time. Closing. So we'll see how that works. It should be fairly accurate. I hope it is, at least. Okay, and do, do, and mark. Alright. Merchant bearing two. So as long as he doesn't change speed, like all of these merchant ships like to do. Nine and a half knots. Ugh. 
That's kind of interesting. He is kind of moving a, a little. Let's adjust our course a bit. Nine and a half knots. That's just weird. I don't like... I mean, I'm not going to... I mean, I guess I believe it. Looks like he's just heading due east now. Alright, well, let's keep approaching. Nine and a half knots. Do I want to use a Mark 14 or one of our new bad boys? I want to use a Mark 14 on this guy. So I believe this is a Zimbu Maru, mostly because of those masks, those skinny tall masks that are kind of angled. Uh, that's pretty iconic, kind of gives it away. Yeah, that's him. Zimbu Maru, man, I've been playing this so much, I'm starting to remember the ships. Oh no, I clicked that out of the game. Oh, I hope that doesn't mess anything up. Oh boy. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh... Alright, I just restarted the recording, just in case, uh... My desk, me clicking off of my monitor, mess that up. Just want to be sure. Rather be safe than sorry, right? Don't want any messed up footage. All right, so we can go ahead and turn that off. I don't, I don't need to hear that. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the sonar station. I feel like I hear an airplane. All right. Anyway, let's see what his range is. <clears throat> Oh wow, he's pretty far out there, about 4,250 yards. That's what they're getting? Ping again. Okay, that's better. 4,000 yards? Send to the TDC. Barry, two, nine, nine. Let's try that. There we go. That's better. Center range? 3,710 yards. One more time. And since uh, it's just a merchant ship, I'm not... Oh yeah, we're really closing in on him. That's better. He's pretty close. He's going to be very close. So I think that range automatically updates. Let's actually... Let's just check here. Yeah, see that range, that is pretty good. That range automatically updates with our, uh, let's turn on tracking. Oh, perfect. Okay, we just need to adjust AOB. It's at a pretty steep angle, I would say 40 degrees. Uh, maybe 45, mark. And now our solution, once we plug in speed, which we established is nine and a half knots. It's really weird. I kind of want to redo that just to be safe. And we plug that in and our solution will uh, automatically track. And it, yep, it does take into account range and such. Even if you uh, completely turned around and your stern torpedoes got a solution, it would automatically start tracking with your stern torpedoes. The American TDC was actually quite advanced. It was a pretty good computer able to keep track of a lot of different uh, variables. Alright, so let's see here. I'm um, trying to think. I think I will go ahead and try to get this guy's speed one more time. Because nine and a half knots, that's just a little funky and I'd rather have confirmation that that is correct. Mark, especially since this is the first episode of the patrol, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to screw up too badly. Not too badly. My goal is to screw up as little as possible, especially with the first episode. Two minutes. Alright, three. After we establish this speed is okay, or not okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and commence firing. Mark. Alright, let's go ahead and see. Ten knots. Okay, so we got a full round ten knots this time seems yeah we sure did so let's go ahead and plug that in mark okay we'll shoot tube one and two let's what do we got here what do we got going on here okay we have a pretty good angle range 2300 i'm sure this is fine let's just look 
Yeah, see, it gets a little off, mostly because uh, I did not have the right AOB and such. And speed. The speed was off. So let's go and redo. Let's redo this. Alright. So, I think there should be a way to change this. Like, we only ping on our visual. So anyway. That was a pretty good, uh, let's try one more time. Barry, three, one, seven. One, nine, two, zero. Perfect. That looks good to me. AOB, uh, he's pretty much at a right angle. I'm going to do 80 degrees at the moment. Yeah, 80. Come on there. There we go. Eyeballing that. That looks, that looks all right to me. And we're at a all right angle. Uh, we want to put, we want to make our torpedoes spin just a bit. So that should be good. So he's at, he's at good range. We're going to go ahead and set our torpedoes to high in contact. This guy's whole draft is 15 feet. We'll set our torpedo depth six. That's fine. That's okay. Okay. So tube one open. Tube two open. I'm going to fire at five second intervals. Fire. All right. Get ready. Prepare tube two. And fire tube two. Two two away. All right. Both our torpedoes are away. Hopefully, not a circle runner or anything. I think they're both all right. I don't see our wakes going in a terrible direction. I don't think we've actually had a circle runner yet. We've been very lucky with that. You know, our hydrophone operator would tell us, yeah, I can see the two wakes out there. The reason, you know, sonar and hydrophone operators say torpedo running hot, straight, normal is because of the circle runner problem. But in Silent Hunter 4, they don't say that, which is a damn shame. Damn shame. All right, well, let's take a look. Oh, shit, that's bad. That's off. Bearing. Three. Three. God, why did that miss? Okay, well, he definitely knows we're here now. It's probably slowing down. His speed is slow. I swear to God, this bastard changed speed at the last second. Hmm. Do I launch another torpedo? Mm -hmm. Range was a little off. Did I not adjust my AOB? Three, three, eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, speed is slow. I'm guessing he's going seven knots. We'll shoot one more. We'll just let's just guess. Three, three, nine. Thousand five hundred yards. Mark tube three. High, three, high. Four. High speed contact open tube three. Is he still running straight or is he zagging? Okay, he's still kind of running straight. It almost looks like he's going even slower. Seven knots. Um, let's plug in six. Mark. Doesn't. It looks like he's barely moving. Fire. Fuck it. Bearing three, four, four. All right, I think we might actually get a hit from that. Uh, just <laughs> awesome. I hope this explodes. I really do. If it's a dud, th this guy has earned his right to live. <clears throat> that looks good. Um, that angle, this acute angle, is actually pretty good for Mark 14 torpedoes. It's less pressure on the firing pin. Just there we go. Oh. Oh, well, he made it well worth it with that explosion. All right, merchant lost on bearing three five zero. Well, that was a pretty good save. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if this ship was worth three torpedoes, but that's what it ended up taking. I, I'm curious if that ship changed speed at the last second or my solution was wrong. Um, 
I'm just, I have no self-confidence, so I want to say my solution was wrong, but I, you know, quadruple check that, really. I was fairly confident in that one, but that's just the way it is. That's the way she goes. Well, I will leave you with this. That is going to conclude part one of our 8th Patrol, which is already starting off a fantastic way. So, thank you all for watching. This is Wolfpack345, as always, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.